how do you select a brand name or a trademark that's going to be strong and easy to register? Uh, registering trademarks is the way that you protect your brand. So the first thing you want to do is avoid descriptive names. So the healthy food shop, when it's a shop selling healthy food, is very descriptive. And the law has said that you can't have that kind of trademark because others might want to call their healthy food shops or describe their healthy food shops as healthy food shops. So avoid descriptive names. Also, when you have descriptive names, it's a, an invitation to others to be trying to use something very similar to what you're doing, but not quite the same. So it, it just causes problems. So if you can't have a descriptive name, what should you do? Well, one example would be something completely out of the park, something completely different from what you're offering. And the best example is Apple for computers. It is in no way referencing the actual goods that are being sold. And that's what makes it such a brilliant trademark because nobody else will want that name unless they're actually trying to trade off Apple's reputation. So it doesn't describe computers. It's very easy to use. It's very strong because nobody can pretend that they were came up with the idea themselves or wanted to use a similar name. Uh, and so that's what makes a really strong trademark. But what about things like names? Lorna Jane, for example, for clothing, uh, activewear. Well, you can use names, and if your if your personal name is the brand that you're trying to build, you can do that. But some people sometimes forget to then register that personal name as a trademark, so don't forget to protect it as a trademark. Sometimes people want to use just a first name or a surname. Now, surnames on their own can be very problematic. If they're more than a few dozen, a couple of dozen, uh, with that surname, uh, the, the trademark will be refused in many countries. And that, that number of how many is too many uh, differs from country to country. So in some countries, if there's more than five people with that surname, then it's too much. Other countries are more generous. And so what the government officials do before granting your trademark, they'll go and look on the electoral roll and they'll actually see how many, I don't know, Van Zales or whatever there are in that community or in that country. And the reason for that is basically everybody should be able to trade under their own name and you'd be limiting people if you took that surname as a brand name. But then some people do, you know, McDonald's, they got that through massive, massive use. Um, so that, that's a very special case. <laughs> First names also can be very difficult to register. And again, that's just because people should be allowed to use their names. Other types of trademarks to steer clear of are geographic names. Geographic names are tricky because if you want to protect a trademark, it's basically going to stop others from being able to use that name. So I can't register Brisbane lawyers because other lawyers in Brisbane are going to want to use the word Brisbane and lawyers. The famous example given in one of the cases is you can register a place name if it's totally unconnected with the type of goods you're wanting. So for example, uh, polar or Arctic, I think it was, for bananas would be fine because nobody in the Arctic is producing bananas. And so the court's logic is what would other traders need to use in the course of their business and geographic names unless it's something completely unrelated are generally not allowed and this is a worldwide thing the other tricky thing is that even if you find one of those <laughs> names that are unrelated you might still be objected to because it might be considered to be deceptive so if your bananas don't come from the arctic then you calling them Arctic bananas might be considered to be deceptive. And so geographic names are pretty tricky to get done. So the most important thing when selecting a tr strong trademark is it needs to be distinctive. It needs to be something that relates to you and your business, your brand, your goods, your services, and it sets you apart 
from others. But what about descriptions? I mean, translations, what about translations? So I know that the word Amanzi, for example, is a Zulu word for water. So if you wanted to open a water plant in, I don't know, the US and sell water under the word Amanzi, you might get it through because the examiner might not understand or might not realize that that's a translation for the word water. But if you're unlucky enough to get a South African trademark examiner, they're going to know that it's a translation and they're not going to let it through. And translations of more popular languages are routinely knocked back. So if you come up with something in Italian that is very descriptive, if you suggest it in English, that won't be allowed either. So go for something distinctive, something uniquely uh, you, and that's the strongest way or the way to find the strongest brand or trademark you get the best chance of getting it registered as a trademark and the best chance that nobody else would want to steal it from you.